Hi Year 2 and welcome to episode 2 of our home learning video. Today we're going to be following on from last week's HIIT workout and also looking at hand-eye coordination. For today's activities you're going to need a carrier bag and some balls of socks. Good luck, have fun and I'll see you soon. We're going to do a quick warm up just to get us ready for our main activity which is our HIIT workout. We're going to do some stretches to mobilise our joints, a pulse raiser to increase our heart rate slightly, and some stretches just to get us prepared. To start off with, we're going to do some stretches to mobilise our joints. The first stretch we're going to do is something called heel to toe. So our heel is going to be on the floor, and we're going to have our toe paint, uh, facing the sky. All right, we're going to hold it for a couple of seconds, and then point back down. And then up. And then point our toe back down. Up. And then back. And then we're looking at changing the feet. Make sure, make sure we're mobilising both parts of our body using our ankle. The focus on this stretch is mobilising our ankle, loosening up our ankle and getting us ready. Brilliant stuff, nearly there. Well done. Now the next stretch is something we've done before. It's called hamstring curls. With hamstring curls, we're trying to almost kick our bottom. So let's go up, change your legs, not looking to go too fast, nice and steady. Well done. Mobilising our hips, mobilising our knees as well. We'll do some facing you. Good stuff. Brilliant. Now we're moving on to a slight pulse raiser. With this pulse raiser, we're going to be doing toe taps. Now, when I'm doing a toe tap, our toes going back behind us and then back forward. And the left foot is going back behind us and forward. So if I'm doing it from the front, it's going back and forward and back and forward. And because it's a pulse raiser, we want to do it a little bit faster. We want to get our heartbeats a little bit faster and get us ready. So back, forward, back, forward, back, forward. We might even jog. Back, forward, back. Well done. Brilliant stuff. So now we're moving on to more of a static stretch. So we're going to have our Legs shoulder width apart, hands by our side, and one hand is going to raise up, looking at our hips now, going across our body, going up. And it's almost as if you're breathing into a breathing with your tummy and you're pointing, you're trying to reach as high as you can, holding it for six to ten seconds. Well done, and slowly bringing it down. Well done, shaking it off, and back across our body. Well done, so pointing high. Keep both feet planted on the floor. And slowly bring it back down across our body. Brilliant stuff. So our last stretch, we're focusing on our arms. All right, we can have our arm up, behind our head, so almost as if we're pointing. And one of our arms are pointing to the middle of our back, elbow facing the sky, facing the ceiling. And you're going to put one arm up across it, and you're just going to slightly Touch. Don't push it too much, just going to put some pressure on it. You should be able to feel it in the back of your arm. Can anyone remember what the muscle in the back of your arm is called? That's it, your tricep. Brilliant stuff. Again, holding it to six to ten, for six to ten seconds. Quick shake, and we're swapping arms. So remember, trying to touch the middle of your back, elbow facing the sky, slight pressure on your elbow, Fantastic. Look forward to seeing you in our HIIT workout. Moving on to week two of our HIIT workout. Now this week we're going to challenge you even further by increasing the amount of time you're involved in the exercise all the way to 40 seconds. And our recovery time is just going to be 20 seconds. So we're increasing the amount of time you're involved in the exercise and shortening your rest period, which is really going to challenge you. You're going to reap the rewards. Coming up first is going to be skipping on the spot. So imagine you've got a skipping rope in your hand and you are skipping like your life depends on it. 40 seconds, go!
Coming up next is bunny hops. So you're going to need to be in a front support position that's with your hands flat on the floor, facing the floor, and you're going to be bouncing your feet either side of your body. Next up is jumping jacks. You're going to continue to keep doing jumping jacks for the 40 seconds. Your next exercise is dorsal raises. You're going to be laying on your stomach on the floor and you're going to lift both your arms and your legs at the same time, trying to make that dish shape. Coming up next is hamstring curls. You're going to split your feet and you're going to be trying to kick your bottom every time your foot comes up behind. Coming up is low impact burpees, that means there's no jumping involved, so what you're going to do is you're going to crouch down, place your feet behind you, bring them back and stand and repeat for 40 seconds.
Coming up is leg drops. Now leg drops is going to rely you being on your back with your legs in the air and you're going to lower one leg at a time. Bring it back to your right angle and drop the next one. We're nearly there. Coming up is mountain climbers. So on all fours and you're going to be toe tapping your feet up towards your chest. So bringing those knees nice and high. Nearly there. So coming up, we have star jump squats. So you're going to be coming down into a squat and then you're going to come up into that very big star jump and repeating the process for 40 seconds. Second to last activity is inchworm. So from standing, you put your hands on the floor and you're going to walk your hands out and walk them back and continue all the way through. For the last one, we thought we'd end a little easier with scissor kicks. So you're going to be on your back, feet out in front of you at a 45 degree angle, and you're going to be kicking your feet up and down as if you were swimming. Well done, you've done amazing today. 40 seconds on and 20 seconds rest. That would have got your heart rate raised.
Okay, after such an intense workout, I think we're going to need to cool down and we're going to work our way down our body and stretch our muscles because we don't want you aching. So the first thing we're going to look at is our wrists because actually we've done a lot of floor work today. So we're going to start with our wrists. You're going to push forward so that you put your hands flat on the floor and push forward. And that's it, extending those wrists. Lovely. And back this time we're going to go down. So push them down and back up. So if you find it easy on the floor to lean forward, that's fine. If you want to do it like this, because it actually possibly is putting too much strain on your wrist, that's fine as well. Lovely. All right, we're gonna get ourselves sat on the floor, cross our legs, and we're gonna do some side bends. So, hand across, the other hand is gonna come up and over, and hold it. Lovely, keep holding, and swap. So now this hand is going to go under, and we're going to come over, and stretch. Try and keep your arm above your head, try and keep your back nice and straight, and keep your head in line with your spine. Keep holding, keep holding. Lovely, well done. Now we're going to do a twist. So we're going to put one hand behind, and we're going to put our other hand over on cross legs. And hold it here. Lovely, keep holding. Try and look right behind you. And swap. So this one behind, other hand on your knee, and twist. Lovely, well done. Keep going. Fabulous. Right, we're going to go on to our knees and from here we're going to stretch out our spine. So we're going to put our back down and we're going to curl our back, holding it here. Then we're going to curl our back up. So we're going to bring our chin to our chest and hold it. And back down. Hold it here, try and look up as high as you can. And the reverse, bring your chin into your chest and pull up. Lovely, well done. Okay, putting our feet out behind, we're going to bring one leg up to the side and we're going to hold it here. Hold it for a little bit longer. That's it, try and keep those legs straight. And swap, so the leg goes back out, swap the other leg. If you haven't got your legs further forward, you might need to shuffle. Lovely, well done. Okay, coming back to your sitting pose. So, one knee is going to tuck into the side of your leg, the other leg is going to be out nice and long, and we're going to try and hold on to our feet and pull ourselves down to our knees. Try and keep our back straight. Hold that stretch. Good, keep holding. Lovely. And you'll feel this stretch all the back of your leg. And we're gonna swap sides. So moving over to the other side. Lovely, and we're gonna stretch down. Hold your feet. That's great, you're doing so well guys. And remember, this is gonna help you tomorrow so you don't ache. Lovely, well done. Okay, feet out to the side and we're gonna walk our hands forward, keeping our back nice and straight and lean in. And you should feel this stretch along the inside of your leg. Hold it here. Well done, try and keep your toes up. Some of you might be more flexible and obviously you can do your straddle pose further, but make sure that you can feel it in the same place. Lovely, well done. Coming back up and get that back nice and straight. Okay, onto our side. We're gonna do the last few stretches. We're gonna bring one knee up to our chest and we're gonna drop it over the side. So you'll see my body rolls and we're gonna try and stretch the other way. 
Lovely. Hold it there. And return. Bring your arms back first. Bring your knee back and swap. So the other side, bring your knee up, bring it over and hold it there and stretch the other way. Good, hold it here. If you can get your shoulders down to the floor, that would be much better. Fantastic, coming back up. Oh, and I'm going to hug my knees, keep them nice and tight and stretch out that back. Lovely. And the last one is we're going to do the child pose. So we're going to go onto our knees. We're going to put our bottom back to our feet. We're going to stretch our hands forward. And we're just going to put our head on the floor and relax, having a nice full stretch. That's it. Hold it here. Brilliant. You've worked incredibly hard today and hopefully those stretches will help for tomorrow. So let's move on to the next section. Hi you two, so we're now on to our motor skills activity. Now this term you should be doing multi skills, which means that we'll be doing a range of activities that are improving your ability to do certain skills. So today we're going to be looking at hand-eye coordination. Last week you did something very similar in terms of you were looking at hand-eye coordination by hitting those toilet rolls over with our towel. But today we're going to be using really simple pieces of equipment that I hope you'll be able to find at home. Now you can use the equipment that I'm going to be using today which is a bag, so just a normal plastic bag. Uh, I've obviously found the brightest one I could find, so uh, a bag that you can use or you might need to use a pillowcase or a tea towel or even a pair of socks. Depends on what you want. But the bag will be much slower, which means it's a great one to start with. So, hand-eye coordination means that we need to be looking at the target we're trying to either capture or touch or tap or move because we're trying to identify where it is. So our first activity that we're going to look at using my very bright green bag is going to be throwing the bag up into the air and then catching it. Now we're going to try with our most dominant hand, so that's probably the hand you write with. My hand is my right hand, so I'm going to try and catch it with my right hand. So as I throw it up, you'll notice that the bag comes down nice and slowly, which gives me enough time to see where it's coming down. To help you out, you need to track your equipment. So whether you're using socks or a bag or a pillowcase, whatever you are using, you need to track it. You cannot Throw it up in the air and be staring off to the side because it's going to disappear. So you've got to track where that's going, a bit like you would at school when you're tracking your speaker, and watch it to grab it before it falls to the ground. So let's see, how many times do you think I can do this? I reckon I can do at least five. One, two, three, four, five. <gasps> And did you see that last one went off target, but I was watching it because it started here and it went to the side, which meant I tracked it around. How many do you think you can do with your most dominant hand? So we've used our most dominant hand, but this time we're going to use our less dominant hand, the one that we probably don't quite do. So that's my left, so this one is going to try and catch. But because my right is dominant, I'm going to throw the bag up with my right hand and try and catch with my left. Remember, what are we doing? tracking our equipment. So watching it go up and catch with your left. Watching it go up and catch with your non-dominant hand. Mine is my left. So going up and catch. And always watching where that bag goes because if I throw it far forward, I might have to run to catch it. So I need to be tracking to make sure I can see it. Now remember, if you're in a small space, be very careful of all the things around you. Activity two, so now we're able to use both of our hands, we're going to try something a little bit different. So we're going to throw our equipment up. Now this is probably one you can only really do in a bag because of how slow it drops. You're going to throw the equipment up, you're going to try and tap it either with your dominant or your less dominant hand, and then you are going to catch it. So it's going to look like this. It goes up, tap, catch. Oh, I hit me on the chest. Should we try again? It goes up, tap, catch. 
Now I might want to try and use my left hand because it's sort of standing by the side, not doing much. So I throw it up, tap, catch. So now I've incorporated both hands in this activity. I might even really want to challenge myself and throw it up with my left hand, tap with my right to try and catch my left. And that's really pushing it. So how many times do you think you can throw it up in the air, tap and catch the foot? Activity three is going to be very similar to the last activity where we had to tap it, but this time I'm going to make you use both your hands. So you've got to tap it twice, once with your left and once with your right. Which way round you do it is completely up to you, but the idea is you've got to tap them twice. So once again, this will probably work better with the bag because it's being able to come down slowly, which means it gives you more time to do those activities. So it looks like this. Goes up. And then improve. 
So when you've done your first one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now I love this game, so I'm, I probably could keep going. I got about ten that time. I wonder if I was going to improve, how many do you think I might need to do? That's it. I need to do eleven or more because I want to be better than my first attempt. So let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. Always tracking. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Oh, and I could keep going. So I want you guys to improve on your first score. Are you ready? Go. Okay, so like anything, we're going to get somebody else to do the challenge. So we've got Mrs. Waters here to have a go, and let's see how she gets on. Go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Fifteen. Twenty-seven. The reason why Miss Waters did so well is because she was tracking the socks all the time. Look, Miss Waters has found Miss Gum. I think it's her turn. Oh, maybe a bit more practice and possibly a bit more warning. Okay, we've got Miss Gum here and she's going to have another go to redeem herself. Ready and go. Twenty. Oh, 23! That was much better though. Yay! Well done for completing today's activities and challenges. You've shown grit and we are really proud of you. I know my friends Miss Walters and Miss Gunn are currently trying to complete those challenges as we speak. I know I'll be having lots more goes because I really enjoyed it. Hope you had fun and look forward to seeing you in episode three.